A special program is underway that's helping the local bee population. Students will get a chance to see how local government works. And there's a lot of fun holiday events this season. All that and more coming up next on Tacoma Report. And welcome to this new edition of Tacoma Report. I'm Laura Proctor. And I'm Angie Foster. There are many exciting things happening in the Tacoma Hilltop area. Construction on the Link Light Rail System is going strong. And on October 24th, Tacoma Community House celebrated the grand opening of their new $13 million facility on South L Street. The new two-story building is 27,000 square feet in size and opens up a whole new world of possibilities for the organization. Well, the main thing is, is that we have doubled our square footage to really honor the people that we serve. We have more classrooms, we have clients consulting rooms where pe we can meet privately with the clients that we serve. We also have student lounges, a kitchen, and another area where people can hang out before their classes. And the whole space, it just honors the staff and the community and our clients. Tacoma Community House served around 3,200 people from over 100 countries in 2018. It's hoped this new facility and plans to expand programs will increase that number significantly. Since 1910, Tacoma Community House has been assisting new arrivals to the United States by providing services ranging from English classes to job assistance and help with obtaining citizenship. The American dream, why people come to this country to be a part of America. And even with all the, the strife that's going on to this day, people still want to be a part of this country to pursue the American dream. And that's what this organization symbolizes. We started doing this a while ago, um, but it is especially important today and now that we have done this. We are a light for the state of Washington. We are a light for the nation and we are a light for the world. Tacoma tell, can tell people this is how we welcome immigrant communities. This is what we think about our immigrant communities. This is how we are here to support our immigrant communities. Again, because they are us and we are them. For more information on all of the services that Tacoma Community House provides, please visit their website. The City of Tacoma is continuing to work on advancing broader strategic goals relating to equity and accessibility as well as economic growth. One area it's looking to expand is supporting minority and women-owned businesses. In the first phase of these efforts, going on now through the end of December, the City of Tacoma is looking at ways to make improvements and increase technical assistance, improve compliance tracking, and an increase in its contractor and supplier pool. The city hopes to migrate to state certification lists and to work more closely with labor organizations. This phase will also involve extensive communication and outreach. Additional information and updates are available on the city's website. The city's Events and Recognitions Committee is accepting Martin Luther King Jr. Community Service Award nominations now through November 18th. These awards recognize and encourage excellence in community service activities. Nominations are open in two categories that are lifetime service and emerging leader. The award winner in each category will be selected by the committee and recognized at the city's annual Martin Luther King Jr. birthday celebration on January 20th. For more information and to find the nomination form, visit the city site. High school students who live in Tacoma or attend Tacoma Public Schools are encouraged to apply to participate in Student Government Day on December 10th. Participants will meet with the City of Tacoma's Mayor, Council Members, Executives and staff to gain first-hand knowledge of how the city serves the community. They will discuss important issues and also play the role of the Mayor, City Council Members and City Staff Members in a mock Council meeting. More information is available on the City's website. We all like to go out to eat from time to time. But how do we know if the restaurant we like to go to is up to code and safe to eat at? When we come back from the break, we'll talk with the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. They know a thing or two about this topic. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Tacoma Report. When you go out to eat, you shouldn't have to worry about getting sick. Tacoma Pierce County Health Department's Food and Community Safety Program works to make sure you don't have to. They're at work every day inspecting food establishments across the county to help provide a safe dining experience for you and your family. Here to tell us more is Carolyn Bassett. Good morning, Good Carolyn. Morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Carolyn, can you tell our viewers about restaurant inspection, how often you inspect food service establishments and what you look for during the inspection? Sure, so we inspect every place in Pierce County that either sells or provides food to the public. Places like grocery stores, restaurants, even schools. We have about 3,800 permitted facilities in our county and we do between seven and 8,000 inspections per year. So each place gets seen on average two to three times. When we do an inspection, we wanna look at the entire facility. We wanna make sure that where the food is being made, it can be made safely. Mm. We want to watch how the food workers are handling the food and look for things that could possibly make people sick. So we watch to make sure that nobody's touching food with their bare hands, that employees are washing their hands when they should be, and that nobody's working when they're, when they're sick. We also wanna make sure that the equipment is working properly. So we'll take temperatures to make sure that the food is staying hot enough or that the cold food is staying cold enough mm -hmm. and also making sure that nothing's left out at room temperature. And then we also wanna be available to provide education. So answer any questions that the food workers or the managers might have and provide suggestions on how they can make their processes safer. Awesome. Um, so how can people learn more about a restaurant's food safety history? Yeah, so um, you can find the most recent inspection report for any permitted food establishment in Pierce County on our website. That's tpchd.org slash uh, food inspections. From there, you can search for any facility either by name or by address. And when you find the place you're looking for, you can open up a copy of the actual inspection report. So it won't be um, a vague description of what happens. You'll see exactly what the inspector wrote based on their observations. Okay, perfect. From there, you can also sign up to receive notification by email anytime we close a food establishment in Pierce County. And there's many reasons why a food establishment could be closed. Uh, maybe they don't have hot water or their refrigeration isn't working, or in some cases, people have gotten sick. And so we need to go in and help them change processes so nobody else gets sick. Okay, awesome. And so can you tell our viewers the number of inspectors and just elaborate a little bit more on the things they do? Yeah, so when we're fully staffed, we have 14 field staff and they do everything from pre-opening inspections for new facilities, um, change of ownership inspections to make sure that the facility uh, can operate safely. They do the routine inspections we talked about. They also do temporary event inspections. So anytime there's a fair or a festival or a holiday bazaar, the inspectors will go out and make sure the food is safe. Mm -hmm. um, they follow up on every complaint we get about a food establishment and they investigate every illness notification that we get. Um, after the inspectors, we also have four uh, technical leads and they're there to support the field staff while they're out doing the work. If they see things that don't make sense or if they have to close somebody um, or if they have facilities that have repeated violations, they support them in that. Okay. And then one final question. Um, how can viewers get more information about improvements to food safety rating information? Yeah, so even though the inspection reports are online, we're looking for a way to make the information more easily accessible and easier to understand. And there's a lot of different ways out there to share information, possibly a mapping system or a grading system like you've seen in other counties. Um, we're in the very, very beginning stages. It's a kind of a long process, so it's not something you're gonna see in restaurants tomorrow, but we wanted to start having the conversation with business owners and with the public to see if what we're doing for Pierce County is what's right for Pierce County. Okay. Um, we do want public input. So if you're interested in providing feedback or receiving updates on our progress, you can sign up at tpchd.org slash notify. Perfect. Well, Carolyn, I have to say on behalf of myself and our viewers, thank you for everything that your office is doing. Um, I think it makes the community feel safer in knowing that these kind of processes are in place to ensure that when we go out to eat, we don't have to worry about getting sick. So thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. And we hope you'll come back to the show. Of course. Thank All you. All right. Food safety rating systems exist in many areas of the country, and Tacoma Pierce County Health Department is exploring what would work well in Pierce County. It's part of the Health Department's ongoing effort to make food safety standards clear and easy to understand for anyone who eats in Pierce County. Learn more at the Health Department's website. When we come back from the break, we've got a fun story about how Tacoma Traditions is helping out Mother Nature. 
Stay with us. Everyone knows about the amazing candy products that Tacoma's own Brown and Haley makes. It's world famous. Brown and Haley and the city of Tacoma have formed a unique partnership that's working to help local beekeepers. Stacy Elifred has more on how the clever disposal of a sugary byproduct is helping the environment. An innovative solution has led to the creation and donation of 1,500 gallons of sugar water to local beekeepers. It all started with a desire to find a use for an otherwise wasted byproduct. Typically, the way we use our sugar is just in a dry uh, formula. We pump it into our building to make the fine confections that we do. We uh, had some buildup on the inside of the silos, and so in order to clean that out, we actually have to run water in there, and that product is a byproduct for us. We can't use that in making our types of candy. Installed five years ago, this is the first time the 40-foot tall sugar storing silos are being cleaned out. If this creative solution is successful, Brown and Haley may continue this process every time they need to clean these storage towers. This is just a great example of we reached out to them saying, hey, we have this, what's the right way to um, use or dispose of this sugar water? And uh, through our partnership with Tacoma, we found an opportunity to actually support uh, a great cause within our community. Through this partnership, instead of being thrown away, this sugar water will get recycled by local bees into honey. This liquid will be taken from the silo, placed into the vacuum tanker, and then delivered over to our Tegro facility where it'll be transferred into a series of totes, and then we'll invite local beekeepers to come by and fill their containers. Beekeepers use sugar water to feed bees over the winter months when nectar supplies are low. They can bring containers to the Tegro facility where it will be available for on the first come, first serve basis until the material is been distributed. The free sugar water will be available upon request starting in mid-November. This has been a great experience to work with the local industry to develop this synergy and again benefit our local environment as well as achieve some goals. For Tacoma Report, I'm Stacey Ellifrit. Local beekeepers and hummingbird enthusiasts are encouraged to contact Tagro to receive updated information about the sugar water's availability. Since we're talking about the environment, we want to remind viewers that old, uncertified wood stoves and fireplace inserts are no longer legal to sell, purchase, give away, or install anywhere in Washington State. That's because they are polluting, inefficient, and cannot be used during an air quality burn ban. If a resident has an old but working wood stove or fireplace insert, they can bring that to a designated recycling location and receive a $350 reward. To find out more about the program, including eligibility requirements, visit the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency site. It's hard to believe that the holidays are just around the corner. And there are a lot of fun things for you and your family to do this season. You're not going to want to miss the annual zoo lights taking place at the Point Defiant Zoo and Aquarium. Preparation is well underway for this annual extravaganza. With over 700,000 lights being strung together to create a holiday memory for all who attend. Getting zoo lights ready is quite an adventure in itself. I'll generally start in the begin as close to the beginning of September as possible and just start testing everything, making sure everything's safe. And then everybody else, we get going decorating as close to October 1st as we can. And it takes that long from October all the way till we open on Thanksgiving. Well, some of the challenges we face, uh, definitely the biggest challenge we face is the weather and uh, the moisture. That's definitely the biggest enemy to uh, Christmas lights. In the past, we had to be, uh, battle with squirrels and stuff stealing the bulbs, but luckily now we use new technology and they don't, they don't steal them. But yeah, definitely the weather. Um, last year we had to battle the snow and a little, a little bit of wind, so that took, took its toll, but that's what we're here to do and fix and repair and get it out there better every year. The reason we don't leave the lights up all year round, although we make a lot of stuff easier and set up definitely quicker, um, is just like I said before, is the weather. They, they wouldn't last. Um, while LED strands definitely last longer than the old technology um, incandescents, they still aren't going to last all year up in the weather, for sure. It would be easier, though. This year, visitors will see a lot of baby animal light decorations to coincide with the many new additions that have been born at the zoo this past year. Zoo Lights runs from November 29th through January 5th. 
and the only night it will be closed is Christmas Eve. You can get tickets at the zoo, online at the Point Defiance Zoo website, or by going to local Fred Meyer stores. While Zoo Lights runs through the entire holiday season, there are several events that only happen once, so you'll want to make sure you have them on your calendar. The 74th Annual Holiday Tree Lighting Celebration will be taking place on Saturday, November 30th in front of the Pantages Theater. It's a tradition that began back during World War II. The festivities begin at 4.30 and this family-friendly event is free and open to the public. Don't forget about the 6th Avenue Santa Parade, which will be on Sunday, December 8th. 6th Avenue will be closed off from State Street to Alder starting at 2.30 and the parade will begin at 4.30. Entertainment and activities will take place leading up to the parade. And then there's the ever popular Dickens Festival in the Stadium District. That'll be happening on Saturday, December 14th from noon until 5. There will be carriage rides, live music, caroling, and costume characters throughout the area. Like the other one-time events we mentioned, the Dickens Festival is a free holiday tradition. And to wrap up 2019, an old favorite is back. That's right, after taking last year off, First night will be going strong in downtown Tacoma on New Year's Eve. This alcohol-free, family-friendly event will take place starting at 5.30 on Broadway Street between 9th and 11th. It's being put on by the City of Tacoma, Metro Parks Tacoma, the Puyallup Tribe, Tacoma Arts Live, and the Theater District Associates. There will be a lot of activities and entertainment taking place outside on Broadway, which are all free. There will also be performances occurring indoors in buildings along Broadway. Those can be attended with a first night button, which, if you get before December 1st, is only $10. Children 11 and under are free. More first night information can be found by going to the Tacoma Arts Live website. More and more people are coming to Tacoma for conferences and conventions. A lot of that has to do with the Greater Tacoma Convention Center, which just got a big recognition. We'll tell you more about it after the break. Tacoma has a lot of state-of-the-art buildings which serve the community quite well. So much, in fact, that Exhibitor Magazine has named the Greater Tacoma Convention Center to its top 20 best convention centers in North America. Locations were evaluated using measures in five categories, including facility, location, and expansions, to name a few. The Convention Center hosts an average of 220 events annually, with more than 125,000 attendees. To find out more about this world-class convention center set in the heart of Tacoma, visit their site. The City of Tacoma wants to hear from community members in its upcoming community survey, which is being conducted through November 22nd. A total of 750 randomly sampled households, 150 from each council district across Tacoma will have the opportunity to weigh in. So with the community survey, we're looking for community members to share with us which community issues and services are important to them, which areas have improved over time, and which service areas they wanna see improve in the future. So if you are among those who are randomly selected to receive a call from the telephone number 866-415-0012, be sure to take that call and help the city in its ongoing efforts to improve its processes. Please note that no city survey will ever ask you for personal or financial information. In 2013, the Tacoma First 311 Customer Support Center opened its doors and staff started taking calls as well as in-person and online requests for City of Tacoma services. Six years later, with more than 100 request types, a much-loved mobile app and a small but dynamic team, the Customer Support Center has served close to 400,000 customers and received more than 85,000 service requests. The Customer Support Center has really grown. It's uh, really deepened its roots with the community. Um, our great customer support staff that works here at the Customer Center is always willing to answer the phone, uh, deal with a customer that might come in that has a problem and maybe they're a little bit frustrated, but they've really worked hard over the last six years to uh, improve the understanding of the community and be responsive to the needs of the community. Good afternoon, Customer Support Center. This is Gary. How may I help you? What the community has today is a concierge feel in the way of reception, 
face-to-face -face interaction, 311 telephone support, online services, and mobile app connectivity. To learn more, go to the Customer Support Center website. And finally, administrative offices at the City of Tacoma will close Thursday, November 28th and Friday, November 29th in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. The Tacoma Recovery and Transfer Center will close and garbage, recycling, and yard waste will not be collected on Thursday, November 28th. Customers whose garbage, recycling, and yard waste are normally picked up on Thursdays or Fridays can expect pickup one day later this week. All other customers can expect pickup as normally scheduled. That's all the time we have on this edition of Tacoma Report. A great way to find out about the services the City of Tacoma has to offer is by going to cityoftacoma.org. Until next time, I'm Laura Proctor. And I'm Angie Foster. Thanks for watching.